Welcome to the episode 38 of the Full Funnel B2B Marketing Podcast. And we are back with our CEO series. And today's guest is Paul Vancoli, who is the founder and the CEO of Arco Information. Arco helps companies in digitizing paper-based processes with solutions ranging from digital archiving through digital signatures to invoicing and procurement solutions and has offices in Belgium, Canada, and the US. Paul is also a big supporter of his local football club in Mechila. Arco there has a skybox and brews his own beer. And I'm excited that, to have Paul today because he's a true veteran of uh, marketing and selling complex IT solutions uh, with a very sector focused approach, which I'm a big fan of. Welcome, Paul. Thank you for the invite. So. Uh... I will help you and give you a, a bit enlightening in how we look at the world and how we try to work through the interesting times we have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I think that you started Arco Information, let's say before internet became mainstream and the company is still going strong in one of the most competitive markets, uh, markets out there, I would say digital transformation, et cetera. So what would you say made Arco competitive through all these years? Well, uh, you started in your beginning. Um, we work sector-based and focused on customers and their needs. So on the one side, you have products off the shelf. And when you look at Microsoft products like SharePoint, or whatever, they are off the shelf, but you have to customize them. And over the years, we have found that customizing those products is difficult because you have a licensing problem or you have a whatever. So what we in the end made is products fit to what our end customers want and priced at the price they can and will pay for. That's a bit the secret weapon we have been using over the years. And basically that weapon has not changed. We have to adapt with changing times. Like now it's internet. Internet brings other opportunities, but other challenges. So, um, but the basic message is people helping them in their in, in their business, in their sector, to achieve what they need to do to be competitive in the market. So your go-to-market, let's say, is very sector-based, like you just yes. explained. And uh, let's say, why, why did you choose that approach? Or maybe what, in your opinion, are the main well, benefits of, of such an approach? I always compare it to shipping. Um, in, in this world, you have large corporations, and I, can't, I see them as the big tankers on the ocean. Uh, very strong financially, very well organized, but when it has to turn, mm, not a good idea. So, but then you have the little, uh, what you call the boats that bring them into the harbor. Yeah? And that's where I situate. You don't need a big boat to do that. You need to know the harbor. So uh, and in the harbor and the bus on the sea, don't put your motors on because your boat will sink. And that's a bit the relation I developed with, uh, with, with my company, it's that uh, we are very good in niches. And as long as we are in the niches, we are pretty good and strong. The moment you go to the general public, well, then you, you get hit by all the big corporations that just want to sell volumes. And if it becomes a pricing issue for Coca-Cola or whatever, it's a fight you cannot win. It. So you're kind of like the big fish in a small pond. Yes, and we try to find the pawns. My father always said, play on the football game, you can win the match. So it's the same with the pond, fish in the pond, you can fish in. Don't go in a pond where there's two big fishes that would eat you. So it's always <laughs> eat or be eaten. So it's one or the other. And I, I wonder, like, um, so let's say uh, some of the listeners are thinking about, you know, doing a more focused, sector-focused approach. So... I wonder, like, how do you choose which sectors to focus on? Uh, there's two ways. There's a planned way and an operational way. So we, we do attend a lot of conferences, seminars, also new receptions. And then sometimes you start talking with people. We have a problem. Oh, what's your problem? And what do you do? And they're in a specific sector. So that's how we started hospitals and police. Because the police forces, they said, we have a problem with this and nobody can solve it. Ah, tell me, what's the problem? So some are planned, some are not planned. So uh, of course, as we get in the beginning, when we were smaller, it was more unplanned. It was like knowing, knowing somebody. As you get a bit bigger, you have to bring your company in two modes. You have the, the machine mode, the 
a structured approach where you choose, okay, which market should we go for? And uh, the un unstructured approach, we meet somebody somewhere and, hey, that's a good idea, let's have a look at it. So you always have to be open for listening rather than talking. Would you say this is kind of 80-20? So let's say 80% 80, 80 of, of effort invest in what you know mm -hmm. is working well and what you call the structured approach and 20% in exploration and... Yeah, it's... Um, right. Well, in the beginning of Varco, it was the reverse. It was 80-20. So and over the years, if you grow, you need stable because not everybody can work in an unstable environment. So we are moving. I think today, if I look at the figures, we are 70-30. Okay. So 70 is stable, 70, 72, and 30 is pioneering. But a company needs to pioneer. If you don't, you stop them. Uh, but I wonder, like, in terms of, like, communication and, and marketing and messaging, um, how do you adapt that communication to make them sector-specific and maybe even uh, function-specific? Um, well, first of all, if, if, uh, first of all, you have to look at what product you're offering to what market. So let's say it's a financial product, then you will talk to the CFO, not to the ICT manager. That's the last one he talks to, because usually they are the people of me. They never want to do it. Has to be Java or this or that, and they say, well, it's it has to solve the issue. So uh, you have a mismatch there in many companies. So you talk to the people who is who are concerned. And then you, you talk to people who want to pioneer. So in, in every sector, there are people who just want to take play safe. We take whatever comes along and we use that. And then you have people saying, oh, we've never done this before. Let's try it. And once they try it, people declare you a bit crazy, whatever. And then when it works, they all say, oh, you, are, you have a good idea, very good idea. And then you have to use the tam-tam. Like so people have to talk to each other. Um, a bad installation um, goes around much faster than a good installation. If a good installation is working, people talk to each other, they tell each other. If it's bad, before you, you hear it, it's already in the market. So, so never deliver a bad installation. That would be my, my suggestion there. But it's, 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 it's something, and this is where um, we do um, in the States uh, what we call pitching, uh, but nobody will buy a half a million or uh, 200,000 system after three minutes of pitching. Eh? So the one who shows that to me, well, he can immediately come and work with us. I've never <laughs> seen it happen. <laughs> so, other than, other than word of mouth, um, yeah. let's say, how do you help that word of mouth spread more? Or so, how? Yeah, you have, you have um, how do you call it? In, um, you have professions, um, groupings like VOCA, uh, you have associations um, who talk to each other. And then, of course, we have sometimes, as big as the market gets, we have the market itself that says we want to have a kind of a user group with ARCO. That's how we, at one point, we started to do our ARCO user conferences. And in the beginning, we did it per sector. But after a while, we put it over the sectors because they have similar, technically, they have the same problem. But how they do it in their sector is often a bit different. So you learn a lot from going from chemists uh, for a chemi uh, industrial world to banking world, because basically they have to deal with documents and they have to do things with it. So it's um, bring people together, uh, inspire them and let them talk to each other. And the ideas will rise from itself. Eh? And uh, so that's really, it's really something that you also already mentioned worked really well for you, these, these user mm -hmm. conferences, ARCO conferences. Yeah. Unfortunately, this year made it a little bit harder to do things like that. So how did you adapt? Well, we did uh, video conferencing with an add-on. So uh, we invited people to join the conference. So not more than 20, 25. Never make it longer than one hour because after one hour, they were doing something else or playing on their PC and working. And we always joined a bottle of wine or a cake or a... Uh, a little gift. So when the conference started, let's say at 12, it was supposed to be noon, at 10 to 12, there was somebody at the door from DHL knocking with, ah, I uh, have a bottle of wine, so or a beer, and uh, we want you to join us in drinking the beer in the conference. And that usually makes them not go away in that hour. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So tell, tell us, 
what was your let's say uh, show show rate? Uh, so how many? What, what was the percent of people who actually well, joined? Uh, I have to tell per sector. Uh, if we take everything but medical, so everything but medical was ninety percent, ninety to ninety-five. For mm -hmm. medical, uh, we had only fifty percent. But that was because we had the, the second. So the second presentation was in the middle of the start of the second Corona, and it was really it was I think mid. Mid of end of mid or end November, October, beginning November, and people say, "Ah, oh, sorry, we can't make it because we have really other issues." Of course. So, but apart from the medical, ninety-five. But I say you have to stick to the rules, not longer than an hour. Make it worthwhile. Make them, make it with a kind of a bingo or lotto thing, so that they are uh, the the winner gets a whatever um, a bottle of wine extra or something. I love it because it's easy to distract people, and eh? so uh, it's it's you're behind your PC, and you can put a back screen, you can whatever, eh? you can start typing. So, and to bring the message, you need twenty minutes maximum. And uh, uh, what 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 are usually the topics there on on those virtual conferences? There's always three topics, um, and now for something completely else, so bringing something they did, don't expect. Uh, the classic, the classic say, okay, this is what, and then, um, yeah, and then the other two actually, the two, the two. so uh, a message, not too long, not not the blah, 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 just say, this is what we want to talk to you about, and then something special, and then finish it. Can you share one example of something uh, different that you did, something special, something unexpected? And I don't have one here. So we've got from the police glasses with lights on. So, and we put the lights on and then I will show you. So uh, at one point we said, you know, in life, you shouldn't take life too different. And so if you can't go to the hairdressers, you can always put this on. <laughs> so we try to bring in something that focus them and says, oh, I, either you get a reaction, then he's an idiot or it's fun. So. So we always try, that's a kind of attraction. So I have a few things like this around here. So just to... Some, uh, some, some creativity, something unexpected. Yeah, and some, and some direct approach to the people because one of our sales, who is, in, who is I, we always have the sales joining in. And one of the sales had, she was, she had been running, cross running and her hair was totally unfit. And he said, yeah, Diane, it's time you go to the hairdresser. I was like, oh, what do they say now? What do they say now? <laughs> so. I yeah, create some trigger that they are, hey, come and listen, because they're saying different things. Yeah, so yeah. It's not always special things. Eh? It's just, or when you know somebody in the audience, you say, ah, how's your kid? She managed to go to soccer or how's your aunt? And then everybody says, oh, they're getting personal. So and usually it's planned. Eh? It's uh, when we do events at um, the Skybox, we usually mix friends, prospects and uh, people we know. So you can go to the personalized, personalized item without shocking people. I love it. I love it. And so I, I just just coming back a little bit to our story about the different sectors, I wonder um, what else? So we talked about kind of different use cases, different needs. Uh, maybe we adapt our communication to the sector, etc. Do you have to change other things, uh, adopt other things? Uh, when you when you're communicating to the sectors, um, <clears throat> well, what we usually what we see some sectors are um, like hospitals are not the richest sector in the sense that they have a lot of money for a lot they don't have a lot of money but they always get in the end the money for all the equipment but administration has always been a bit um, yeah they don't get enough funds whatever so there you have to be creative in how you help them financing it without um, getting into a, a cutting price fight. Yeah? So then you rent it or you make a special deal or you, you add. So the most difficult is getting the right price in the right sector. Yeah. Because every sector has different, some, some sectors are very rich like the petrochemical, yeah, they have money enough. Uh, doesn't mean they spend more, but they won't discuss on the things. Uh, while in hospitals, we often see that or, or police forces, yeah, they don't have the money. So uh, they say, oh, we would like to do it, but we can't, we can't 
So we try then to find ways working three, four together. So um, these are the most, and, and always you know, the personal touch understand their life. I think that's always the most, most important one. So that you, yeah, that you get a feel what makes them tick yeah. and what, well, how can you make them feel they really solved my problem. Yeah. And, and be genuine about it. So if you just, if it's just commercial, blah, blah, that's not the way. But if they see you really think with them how they can solve it, I think it's still the best way to, to have a good customer. People need attention. People need, like you're doing a good job, you're doing this right. Come on, don't give up, do it. So that's what it's about. Eh? We're not a, a world of machines, we're a world of people. Eh? I love it. And I, I wonder, like, in your opinion, because you've been through the soul evolution, how did, in your opinion, marketing and sales evolve over, over the last 20 well, years? Um, I think uh, the rules, I mean, the companies want to change it, to change it completely. But I think if you look at it's like uh, over the years, we're going back to the basics. Eh? Um, we're going back to people meeting people. Um, I don't, I, if I'm in LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, and I see all these pubs and I get in the morning, I have 80 mails from whoever is going to make my world better. Uh, it's delete, 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 delete. And uh, when I can, I put it in the, what is it called, spam, spam mail. So I don't think that's the way to do. People who send me mail for a meeting, it's rare when I, so they need, they need to attract me to react. Yeah? Um, if they don't do that, it's, it's not working. Yeah? You send an attention, eh? uh, um, a bottle of wine or uh, something small that attracts their attention. Not a gift because in the large corporations, gifts are not allowed. So you must give something that attracts them, uh, glasses with lights on or something, so that they just are, oh, oh, these guys are a bit strange. So yeah. it's, it's all about getting the attention. Eh? Yeah, I agree 100%. I agree 100%. Oh, it's I'm about standing out. It's about being creative. And it's about also, like you say, being human and, and not no big marketing speak, but just like being human and making a human yeah, connection. And, and it's also different. You have to look at the products. Eh? Um, I, I remember um, we, have, we have a lot of agencies approaching us. They want to do barman publicity. They want to do newspaper, this and this. And long time ago, um, we made a deal with Rularta and we were, um, yeah, they said they, they kind of made an offer, say, look, we, we put you in trends, yeah, so, yeah. Hey, uh, publicity and trends. I got one guy ringing me and say, Paul, I didn't know Arco was making that much money, so I want a discount now. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. And then people came to the office and said, we have never heard of Arco. And we said, but you're a soccer fan, yeah? Well. Have a watch, look at, look Saturday to the television, you will see behind the goal of Mechelen, you will see Arco. So publicity works when they know you. Yeah. So, uh, but if they don't know you, well, it's, uh, I think I, you, there's so many impulses you get. It's only when the people make, or draw your attention to it, they say, oh, I never, I, I, now I see it. Now you're, you're also, of course, you're uh, selling, let's say, IT solutions, but you're also as as an executive of your own company. You're also sometimes acquiring solutions, complex B two B solutions. And I wonder, from your perspective as a CEO buyer, let's say, uh, when somebody is trying to sell you expensive complex products or a service, mm -hmm. just wonder like how do you go about it? Um, well, usually it's um, like you say we have things we want to solve and we don't see a solution in the first place. Then, like like. Like we apply the tactics, we in conferences, we meet people and somebody says, ah, this and this, okay, and did you solve it? Then we try to see who can do it. And then it's a question of trust. Eh? So um, yeah, buying is building trust. Um, oh, yeah. We've been with my wife 20 times in different garages for buying different cars. We always in the end go back to the same, not because of the car, but because of the people, because of the service, because you're treated like a king there. So uh, I love it. So uh, this is a great way to, to end this uh, wonderful conversation. Thank you so much, 